That's neat. Yeah, when we were catching cranes, one of the side deals was that we would catch a lot of boat tail grackles. Uh, hundreds. Oh, because they would eat the eat the corn and corn and the yeah, corn and had just get knocked out. You know? So we gather them all up and one day Nesma says, you know, we ought to ban these things. We banded something like a thousand five hundred of them. Wow. We never got a return. Really? Really. I don't know. We didn't never? even catch them again. <laughs> wow. That's I think bizarre. we caught three others that we'd caught, you know, a day or two before. Right. But other than that, we just never caught them again. I think it's just going to show how many there are to start with. Yeah, true. But you, man, you should see all those great tail grackles down in Texas. Thousands of them. I mean, they just litter the lines when they go into roost. And you know they're very loud. Oh, I know. Like, I would love to very follow good. them to find a roost for them and just stand in amongst them. Can you imagine what that would sound like? Yeah, I've actually been under some fairly small roosts, but the the males do that sort of loopy call, you know, very loud and very, very cool. What were we talking about? <laughs> we were talking about oh Peterson. yeah, the, the boat tail grackles that you got when you were when you were putting out corn. Corn, for the frames, yeah, right? we we started yeah. banning them. Yep. Banned it a lot, over 1,500. So what were you doing with the cranes that you were, you were banding those as well? Yeah, the, the, the idea was to try to catch the local birds right. and get them banded up and eventually radio tagged so that when they nested, the whole premise of the thing was to prove that migration was either innate or learned right and so to do that we were gonna we did capture the local birds and radio tag them and then when they nested switch the eggs out with eggs from migratory birds up north really they were raised up in patuxent but it was that subspecies it right. was tabata so what did you find it's it's learned yeah, that's why they that's why they're able to fly them down here, and that's why they were able to establish the permanent residence because they don't those permanent ones don't go back. So it's a it's yeah it's a learned trait. Fascinating. It is fascinating because they 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 fly those things down there in that airplane, and they're oh, yeah, like that. And, they don't do anything else, and from that point on, they're on their own. They go back to where they were reared, or close to it, you know. So what was it like when, well, first off, do you remember what Payne's Prairie looked like then? I mean, what kind of growth it was? Bob yeah. was telling me it was not like it is now. No. It was mostly maiden cane. Where, where the water was deep enough, it was maiden cane. Yeah. And there were some areas where there was cattail and stuff like that, you know, in the deeper, deeper water. Lots of, uh, but uh, around the edges, it was pasture, pure and simple, hmm. except that it would get flooded every once in a while. And boy, when it did, it was good. Because I can remember seeing golden plovers from the, from 441. Wow. And uh, 4,000 green wing teal sitting in a, in a pasture right where La Chua is now. That must have been amazing. It was amazing. There were so many birds out there. Now I see, I hope that I'm not just remembering it that way, but it seems like to me that there were so many more birds in those days. But they might have all been blackbirds, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm really concerned about the prairie and, and it's, it, it's just going to hell, in my opinion. I mean, they, they don't manage it. I mean, Cone was constantly trying to dry it up. So he was losing the battle, but that was good. Yeah. So, you know, that that's what made it what it was, I believe. The dynamicism of the whole system, you know, flooding. And, of course, we don't have the weather now like we used to have. It used to rain all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bob was talking about that yesterday too. Yeah, I mean it would it starting the last week of May until about the middle of September. If it didn't rain during the afternoon, 
you noticed it because usually around three o'clock it was gonna rain you could set your clock by it but it just doesn't happen anymore it, when did that start being it's one of those kind of things that just changing? sort of slips yeah, so up on gradual, you yeah but it, it's been within the last 10 or 15 years i think i mean that would be easy enough to look up yeah see what kind right. of you know they that uh, average weather, rain, fall thing. I remember when it was like 56 inches, and now it's 48. What the hell? I mean, they must adjust it every 10 years or something like that. Mm -hmm. Instead of, it doesn't reflect the average rainfall from the time they've been keeping records. That's what they should do, instead of because right now I think it's 48 inches. Right. And I can remember for sure when it was 56. And now, well, that's a considerable amount. That's a half a foot. Yeah, it is. So, more than a half a foot. That makes a big difference. And besides which, we're sucking water out of the ground like. Oh, man. It's just unbelievable. It's true. Well, Florida was a. It was a desert at one time before. <laughs> it could be a desert again, I guess. Oh boy. Yeah, prairie. Maybe we get things like ostriches back. <laughs> Camels. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why the Sprague's pippets are showing up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, these look like the high plains of Texas. <laughs> Let's drop in there. Yeah. You know, if you, if you look at Kanapaha Prairie, Kanapaha L Lake, Oh, that's Kanapaha Prairie, where you go, where you found the Sprague's Pippets. It was at Kanapaha Prairie. Yeah. So that, Prairie's Prairie used to look a lot more like that than Prairie's Prairie looks now. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, there was, the middle was wet and lakey and around the edges was grass with right. cattle on it. Enough cattle where they kept it grass. And that's, I think that's why it was. And then there was, you know, patches where there wasn't any grass and it was too wet they could never get it dried out so those were the wet spots mm -hmm. that's probably why it was the way it was ever since the state took it over it's just gone to hell <laughs> I mean it really has but it's still a fabulous place it is I mean it's still the best place around here yeah Do you remember the bird life being any different? I mean, apart from specific species, I mean, obviously. Well, more of them. Yeah. But, you know, we used to have red cockaded woodpeckers. We used to have, when I was living on in downtown Gainesville, we had kestrels nesting. Right. We had, uh, well, we had red headed woodpeckers nesting, but they still nesting down there. I think that's why the kestrels were there, because they could find holes. Yeah. Well, it turns out that's not a woodpecker. Is that just a creaking tree? I think tree? it's a creaking tree. I mean, it's been too consistent. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. There were a lot more house sparrows. I mean, house sparrows up the gazooty. Really? When I lived in downtown Gainesville, it's, that was the bird de jour. And even... Uh, even on the Christmas counts, we had a we had a roost in the square. Downtown Gainesville had four thousand birds in it. Wow. Yep. They, they, they roosted in a couple of those big date palms. Yeah. You could go down there, and even in the, at ten o'clock at night, they'd be raising hell down there. <laughs> yeah, they're always squabbling with each other. No, I don't know why they're so so combative. <laughs> Especially to see the two little males. They look like turkeys. Got their wings dropped down, the tail up in the air. <laughs> what about starlings? Do you remember the first starling you saw? Of course, the first one in the county was, you were only four years old. When it was right. Born. I don't remember the first starling I saw. I remember the first lark sparrow. <laughs> well, not quite the same. No, I don't remember the first starling I saw. Well, speaking of good birds, what do you remember about... Uh, you and Steve saw a rough-legged hawk, didn't you once? Was Steve involved in that? I think so. I remember seeing a rough-legged hawk back in the 60s on 441. Yeah. And 
I don't think Steve was there then. Okay. What do you remember about it? Just a, it was a, a light phase juvenile, and it stayed all winter. I saw it more than once. Oh, really? Yeah. It was right there along 441, and I think it was identified by Austin or somebody. I'm surprised it made it through the winter without getting shot. You know what that old goat did? Yeah. <laughs> I think I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. There was a culvert there on 441 Yeah. after it was four-laned, and the first barn swallow nest was there. He went down there and collected not only the adults, but the babies. Right out of the, I just scraped them off the wall and <laughs> squished them. Yeah, I think I've seen those. Uh... Golly, I found out about that. And that that might have been the thing when I called him up and said, I will never, ever tell you about anything else again. <laughs> well, you know what he did with the scrub jays, right? No. I Down in Cro Cross Creek, there were, well, he called it Cross Creek. It was actually closer to Island Grove, I think. Yeah. There were still four scrub jays there back in the mid 60s. He went and got them all? He got them all. They're laying side by side in the museum drawer now. Golly. Together forever. Yeah. Well, you know what? His protege Henry Stevenson nearly wiped out a subspecies of Carolina wren. Really? Oh yeah. St. George Island had its own subspecies that he he found out about. Yeah. He measured them out, you know, and then he went out there and collected a series. <laughs> Turns out that's all of them. <laughs> I, well, I went out there one day, and I was walking along. It was in the spring, and I came upon an, a mist net, yeah. an open mist net with birds dead and alive in it. And obviously, they'd just been left up like that. So I let the live ones loose, and I tore the net to shreds and stuffed it on them, you know, tra trampled it all down. <laughs> <laughs> and left, but you just can't imagine the irresponsible crap that those kind of old guys. They had no respect for the for the animal. All they were interested in was tags on the toes. Yeah. They they talk about us with ticking things off. I mean that's worse. At least we don't hurt them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well. So after the, uh, I remember this other little thing, after the, uh, the, the hotel closed. Right. Well, the, the bird ladies uh, moved over to the Manor Motel. Mm -hmm. There was not very many motels back in, in Florida in those days, or in Gainesville, very few. And the Manor Motel was a little motel that was located on Glen Springs Road, and at that time it was 441, but it was 13th Street. And it was sort of out of town. Right. Uh, there's a, I think there's a, oh, an abandoned furniture store there now. You know where I'm talking about? Right on the corner of 23rd and. Yeah, oh, and, sure. Yeah. And so anyway, the Glen Springs, it was called the Manor Motel. Mm -hmm. And they had a, a fairly big room. It was actually two rooms together. And a back, sort of a backyard. Mm -hmm. And they had a bird feeder up. And they got a LeConte Sparrow. To come to the bird, bird feeder? feeder, yeah. It was there all winter. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was a while. About what year would that have been? Let's see. I would say probably 50, 59, maybe, maybe not quite that old. Huh. 58, 59, somewhere along there. Because I think that's. Uh... Well, there's a lot of birds up there. Probably golden, yellow crown, uh, ruby crown kinglets. There's a black and white warbler. I see a chicken. On the eat. underside of that uh, heavy branch over there, just dropped yeah. down. He comes while we go into the bird bath. I have one that comes with the bird bath every day. There's a blue green neck catcher. I think. A chickadee. Oh, maybe it's a chickadee. It's kind of upside down there now. Uh, yeah. 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 You have to go on back to the bird feeder. Red belly woodpecker. Oh, we saw golden fronted ones out there. Oh, that's such a beautiful bird. Is it really? You've but never seen one? I have seen, I think I've only had two sightings when I was out in Texas. 
Yeah, well, they're. I found them hard to hard to locate. Yeah, well, but in South Texas, they're just like red bellies. Oh, really? In fact, more common. They don't they don't seem to be as you know. Red bellies are kind of honorary toward each other. These guys get together in flocks. Really? Yeah. I oh, mean, that's we would. Bizarre. I mean, there'd be six or seven of them yeah. hanging around together. Now, probably in breeding season, they're not like that, but. I mean, it's not the same bird. They sure look alike, but oh, you yeah, can they tell sure they're the lanterpes or melanerpes or whatever. You, how do you say it? I call it melanerpes. Melanerpes. But you ask any one of these ornithologists and they say, I don't know. Well, no, the nobody's a, there aren't any Romans left. <laughs> so going back for a second to these uh, uh, scrub jays that uh, Austin shot. Did you ever end up seeing a scrub jay in Alachua County? Yeah. Never did. There were theoretically uh, some still over at Archer as late as 1980. I know. I, that was the theory though, I think. Did you ever see him? I didn't see him, but this guy named Jeffrey